Hello everyone, I just want to make a really quick video today on showing you how to loop all of your effects in Houdini. Uh, this is something that you're going to need to know when creating effects. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're stylized or realistic, it's uh, definitely handy to know and, uh, know how to do this. Um, <clears throat> so I've just made this sphere with a mountain and then uh, gone into the shelf tools uh, and then select smokeless flame and then that's applied this and now as you can see if I play that will do this wonderful pixelized uh, smoke for me now say we want to loop this and put this into engine um, <coughs> we're gonna do this with a 64 frame uh, as we normally do so the first thing that we actually need to do is that we need to fix this box this uh, resize container and the problem with this resize container is that, as you can see, as the simulation goes on, it grows and shrinks and grows and shrinks. And what happens is when we try to loop the simulation after we cache it, that box is going to end up overlapping with itself. And the uh, and Houdini will only be able to have one resize container in there at, at one time. And uh, because it your frames will end up overlapping, you might get one frame where the box is really really tall like it is now or you might get another 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 frame that overlaps with that and the box is a bit smaller like this so Houdini won't know which box is the right box to use uh, when looping so what we need to do is we actually just need to kill this off um, we can delete it like so you get this wonderful uh, box now set it back to 1 and should be fine uh, and now you see if, if we play the box doesn't the box doesn't change the, the resize container but we are getting some clipping so we're gonna need to fix that okay let's put this back let's try and match this as best we can and what I'm doing here is I'm I'm just uh, looking around the sim trying to get it as uniform as possible and then I'm holding shift and clicking on these red arrows and pulling them up and that does both sides you see so the bottom and the top is moving also I it took me forever to figure it out but for some reason I couldn't get these arrows to appear and if you're if you're struggling to get these arrows to appear so you can change the the box there's a few things you have to make sure you you have selected uh, one is this smoke object you need to have selected you see if I select the the pyro solver then this box the red arrows they go away you need to have the smoke object selected and another thing is that you also have to have this uh, show handles uh, selected if you have this on then you can't do it so show handles and select the smoke object alright so uh, let's try and make this a bit taller I think uh, let's play I think just for like uh, this tutorial sake, it doesn't matter too much if it's going to be clipping or, or whatever, but I think this will do. Uh, maybe it's a bit too tall, but sometimes you can have this like large uh, clumps of gas that comes up all the way up. So I guess it's quite it's quite nice to have that tall, tall box. All right, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, all right, now we need to come out here and we need to cache the simulation. First, I'm going to save this. Uh, if you save it, it creates a hip file and it creates the directories for your cache file. So it does it all automatically. So it's a, definitely a good idea to to do so. I'm just going to create a new folder. Say uh, fire loop tut. And in here, oh. uh, here I'm going to call fire loop. Okay, now, uh, just in case you aren't, aren't aware of how this works, right? So, so this is your source. Uh, that is the source, and then here is your simulation. This is where you control how your simulation looks. And then in this one is the Pyro import. What this node does is that this is a visualization node, so you can see the colors and, and whatever else. And this one is the, the node that imports all of the data. So if you middle mouse on this one, here you can see it has the velocity x, velocity y, temperature, heat, fuel. This is all the data that's being read into this node and it's being visualized with this node. 
uh, so okay so what we need to do is we select this node and you see here it says uh, geometry file if you middle mouse on it it tells you where that's where it's gonna <coughs> save this geometry um, here is all the all the fields gonna it's gonna save out but what we want to do is want to create a file cache I think we're gonna cache maybe 150 frames. I think is good. I don't think we need 240. 150. See here now it says one to 150. See if I change this to 160, it changes automatically up here because this has uh, some some scripting on it that knows your frames. Uh, here's the geometry file. This is where you're gonna save your your cache. And you can see here it says uh, hip uh, forward slash geometry so this is a folder that the hip file because we just saved it it creates this file here geometry and here you can middle mouse on this bit and you'll understand a bit more in human terms uh, so Houdini blah 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 uh, that will do uh, yeah so uh, yeah everything looks fine this is all you have to do you don't really have to do much here um, you can do both of these here just if, if you like uh, and let's go save to disk uh, and then I'll just get back to you when this is done. All right, my cache is done. We're going to come up to object level. No longer need to preview this and this. So we're going to create a new geometry folder. We're going to call this cache. Oh, cache uh, in. And here, this is now a file where we can read in that cache. Uh, select this little button go into that geometry folder that Houdini created and here you can see uh, here is the cache frames 1 to 60 uh, that's how big the cache is always <coughs> I'd say you should definitely be aware of how big your cache files are uh, they can definitely take over your hard drive very quickly with if you're not careful like this one is half a gigabyte um, and that's just a small little flame render that doesn't even have that many high voxels in you know so uh, I've had some that's been 20 gigabytes, so just be careful. Uh, anyway, yep, a little tip is if you don't see it like this, then here's a little checkbox here that will change all these, it'll put all these frames into into one file and then you can select it and press accept. So here you go, this is now our cache. Uh, the thing is the Houdini will still try to simulate um, the simulation here if you have this uh, previewed so if you disable this and also press this little brain icon um, not really sure why it's a brain but uh, if you press that that means that it, Houdini will not try to simulate anything um, that means you can now do this super fast um, you can do this just as fast as your computer can load it in so uh, all right so I said we we're gonna try and put this into a 64 frame so that's what we're going to try and do. Um, but the thing is, we don't want to loop. We don't want to loop this bit because um, the player will be able to know. Oh, the fire is growing, and then if you do that again, it's growing and growing. Like it's it's easy to tell. You kind of want some noisy mess. That is the the middle part of the simulation. And you can see these end frames here. They're a bit too long and not very desirable. So we're going to try and avoid that. So maybe from Frame uh, hundred and fourteen. Let's try that. So we're gonna cut it off a hundred and fourteen. So I just typed in here in the bottom one hundred fourteen, and then here we're gonna do fifty or fifty one rather. And that should, if my math is correct, be sixty four frames. Uh, okay, that looks good to me. It'd be nice if we can loop that, I think. Now looping super easy. It used to be a lot more complicated. Um, before you'd get a, a time shift node. And then, oh sorry, not, <coughs> excuse me. Mm, not time shift. Is it time blend? Not time blend. Uh, what is it? Time something. I haven't done it in a while because there's just no need. But it was one of these nodes and then that would... Uh, that would loop your cache but super easy now you come up here to your tool shelf and then you select the games one 
and then you should have all these tools here if you don't have these tools there should be a button here in uh, 16.5 I believe it is I only have 16.0 but uh, if you get 16.5 there should be a nice little button here in the games tab that will update all these tools and if you don't have this games tab you I believe you have to go into into this drop down and then uh, find uh, games if it's in here or is it in the other one Nope, that's the layout. Uh, ah, sorry. <coughs> you click on this plus here and then shelves and then games. Let's see if I deselect it, it's gone. Uh, games development tool shelf. Ah, see, here's your button now. Games development tool shelf, and then you have this button. Okay, cool. Uh, so here's the make loop button. There's a bunch of tools in here. Uh, I won't go into detail of how they'll work. I don't really know how they all work, but uh, there's plenty of tutorials online for you to find that. Uh, we just want the make loop button. Press that, and then as you can see, uh, it will place it right here. And it will say the starting frame is frame 51, and the end frame is 114. So that's because we have these numbers down here. And if you play, it should automatically loop. Now, as a player, I can see that this is like a puff. I don't really like that. Okay, so what I what I would do if I was uh, making this in for for a game, I would I'd have to go back here, resim, try and play around with some values, or or maybe even set the time scale up um, and increase the sub steps, and then that will give me a a, a different a different style. But yeah, that's easy. That, that's about it, right? So now you have to do. Uh, Go on to here and then go to your out. Put down a mantra. And in your mantra, you want to make sure that you render the frame range. Uh, so this is like a polygon. That's a decent way of rendering. And uh, stick down a camera. You should always set your cameras to a power of 2 uh, in here. So that's 512, 512. And there you go. There you go. There you have it. That is now a loop. So now that you have your camera, you have your camera down, and you have your loop. You go to output and your mantra, and just say render to disk. And once that's done, you're good to go. All right. So our render is done, but uh, <coughs> I've just realized that I, I forgot to add something in. Uh, if you head back to your to your object level, you can see if I unselect this right, and I turn these ones back on, um, and then we do we go and do a render. We get out uh, render to end play. Uh, this is just like a, like a temporary rendering, so you can see one frame and then to check to see if everything's working. So here you can see it's got its colors in the flame right, but if we Go back and turn this off and turn our cache on and go back to out, render to end play. You will see that there is an error. Like you'll you'll see this big gray box. Um, so to fix this, we actually need to put the material. If you select this node and go render, you'll see the material is applied here. So we need to do the same for our cache. We need to apply that material. Uh, so if we find this under mat, you'll go like this, accept, and now that material is applied, um, and that should be good enough. That should be good to, enough to do that. So if we render the end play just to check, uh, yep, yeah, there you go. So there you have all your channels as they should be and uh, now you can render so let's do that oh shit uh, sorry render frame range and then uh, render to disk all right okay the render is done uh, you guys can end the video now if you know what to do uh, from now on to get it into a sprite sheet and into game but uh, I just like to be thorough so I'm gonna quickly show you everyone else who doesn't know if you head over to your uh, 
networks drop down and go to IMG, it's your image compositing network and click tab, type in image, get this one down and then type in file, enter and there you go. Uh, head over to composite view if you want to see what's going on in this node. Now you can see here's a file, here it is in game, looping, not in game, sorry, uh, <coughs> in compositing, it's looping quite nicely. Looping very quickly though, so if we actually want these frames to play at a uh, normal speed, you have to press this little little clock button. And then if you have a newer versions of Houdini, I think Houdini 17, the, the clock button's actually been moved down here to the bottom left. Um, okay, so, I mean, this is great and all, but this won't work for a game. So, let's drag out from here and type in mo mosaic enter and what mosaic does is it takes all of your frames and then displays them puts them all next to each other and displays them on one frame so you see there you go that's it's actually one two four four frames containing all all of them but we want one frame with all of them so we're going to say eight images per line and there is 64 frames eight times eight is 64 that's how you know what to put in here there you go so that is our flipbook you can take this and put down a rup file output for your rup you you don't want a frame range because now you've put all of your frames into one you see so it's just on frame 51 So you want to go render current frame range and set the output. You can just title it the same. I normally do it like this. So you just title it the same, get rid of this, do underscore TGA. And the important part here is that you have to do dot TGA. Um, and that's how Houdini knows what type of file to save it as. If you don't, then uh, you won't get this option here. So the, it then tells you where you can store your data in so you can store your rgb values that's your c c standing for color so rgb is being stored in the color plane and the a for alpha is being stored in the alpha plane uh, and what that is is that down here you can see this is your rgb r g b uh, and then this last one here is your alpha so this alpha is going to be stored in a TGA that you can then access in Photoshop or uh, just straight into into Unreal Engine or whatever engine you're using. And the last part of this is just to press this little button up here. Boop. And uh, it's rendered. It's all done. And it's ready for you to use in game. Uh, that's how you loop a flipbook for any game engine. I hope you found this useful. Um, I'd just like to say a quick thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel so far. I've managed to, to gain quite a few actually. Uh, in the past few days so thank you very much um, if you guys have any suggestions on tutorials or if you'd like to see me uh, create any sort of uh, help guides to anything related to Houdini uh, or Unreal Engine specific uh, just let me know I'm thinking of doing some ma material tips and tricks kind of thing in Unreal Engine to help you uh, maximize the the usage of, of these channels you know like red green and blue an alpha try to explain uh, what the best way like how you can use these efficiently um, so I might do that I might not let me know if you'd want to see it and uh, thanks for watching